and to identify the lessons that can be learned. Now, those lessons will help to ensure that if we face similar situations in future, the government of the day will be best equipped to respond to those situations in the most effective manner in the interests of the country. At Nuremberg in 1945, it was ruled that deliberately falsifying news to arouse those passions which lead to atrocities is a war crime. Well, as I say, you can pile supposition upon supposition, um, but that still did not make him a current threat. It made him, if anything, a rather long shot to be a potential threat sometime in the future. But there was absolutely no reason to take any action now. The dossier had been eagerly awaited by journalists and MPs in Westminster. The 45 minutes claim was mentioned four times. In fact, it added nothing new to the intelligence assessment of Saddam's WMD capability from Gulf War I. But that, of course, was when we knew he'd actually got one. When the dossier was published, the newspapers got the message. 45 minutes from attack. Saddam can strike in 45 minutes. He's got him. Let's get him. British servicemen and tourists in Cyprus could be annihilated by German warfare missiles launched by Iraq. It was revealed yesterday. Two days later, the American president highlighted the 45 minutes claim that the prime minister had highlighted in parliament. The danger to our country is grave. The danger to our country is growing. And according to the British government, the Iraqi regime could launch a biological or chemical attack in as little as 45 minutes after the order were given. As we got closer to the war, the will to go to war went up like this, but the evidence went down in the other direction. Until now, Iraqi cooperation had been limited. But by early March, it improved dramatically, as these pictures never before seen show. The Iraqis allowed inspectors to destroy al-Samud missiles. Number 10's clever plan was not going quite to plan. He said, if I remember rightly, that uh, it was until the end of the month that the, 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 that action was fairly imminent at that time. And the end of the month was an expression that he used. The moment I heard earlier in the week that Saddam Hussein was saying he would not destroy the missiles was the moment that I knew later in the week that he would announce just before Dr. Blix reported that he would indeed destroy these missiles. But this is not a time for games. We are not watching the breaking of toothpicks. Lethal weapons are being destroyed. One can hardly avoid the impression that after a period of somewhat reluctant cooperation, there has been an acceleration of initiatives from the Iraqi side since the end of January. As Sir Campbell said, I quote, it was not the case for war, it was the case why the Prime Minister had become more concerned. I still defend every single word of the dossier. When he heard this, Major General Lowry emailed the inquiry in January and said um, that the purpose of the dossier, says Campbell, was not to make the course for war. I and those involved in its production saw it was exactly that, and that was the direction we were given. Dot, dot, dot. We knew at the time that the purpose of the dossier was precisely to make a case for war. Well, what it tells us is that, in fact, when the allegation was made that there was sexing up of, uh, of uh, the dossier in order to justify war, that was precisely what happened. Um, but to find that there is now clear corroboration for what many of us believed, which was that this was a war that was intended um, and, uh, and that didn't just uh, somehow arise um, after many failures, but it was intended from early in 2002, I think finding that corroboration, knowing that we were lied to, uh, I think that uh, is still capable of shocking me and I hope still ca capable of shocking many of you. And I think Alistair Campbell has a lot to be ashamed of. Yeah.